Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics and I decided to do a little experiment in this video to highlight how we calculate and rely on these calculations for treating rooms. <coughs> Excuse me, cough has not gone away yet. So part of the impetus for this is to point out how these formulas play out in real life and, and um, how absorption affects the decay time, but also because sometimes I run into situations where clients can't measure they're remote, and so I have to rely on simulations, basically, of the room in order to figure out what the RT60 time of the room is and then how much absorption I need to add to get it down to the level I want. And I think that's a scary proposition because somebody could be looking at spending upwards of fifteen or $20,000, even using very basic acoustic absorbers, $1,500, $2,000, relying solely on my word that I know what I'm doing. So this experiment was a way of kind of showing how this works. And I've done this before on a large scale, but I hadn't really done it on a really small scale. And I was kind of curious how it would work if we did that. So it actually worked out really well. So what I did was I took a, uh, a pro audio monitor, so good flat frequency response speaker, and I hooked it up to actually a very inexpensive Behringer sound interface that's connected to the computer. Um, which has REW on it, I hooked up my measurement microphone, which is a low noise, half inch um, uh, calibrated measurement microphone. And I uh, took that measurement microphone, connected that also to the Behringer, which for these measurements, I actually have really, really good um, measurement interfaces, including an RME, BB Face 2, but this was sitting right here, it was easy to use, and I just was, wanted to get this together. But just so you guys know, like, these measurement interfaces for this purpose is fine. The difference between this and the RME is noise. That's about it. And they're both more than quiet enough uh, for this measurement. So I took a sign sweep of the room and I got a baseline RT60 of the room with the speaker basically pointed away from the microphone. In theory, we should do a bunch of measurements uh, to get like an average, but that's not, right now I just wanted to do an experiment to show you guys what happens. So. When I did that, we came up with a measurement. I'm, I'm looking away from the camera here so I can look at what we measured. And we got a baseline measurement um, um, RT60 that would probably average somewhere in the neighborhood of around 0.6 seconds. But at the low frequencies, it was actually much lower, around 0.33. It peaked as high as 0.65 or so. I then added these foam wedges, which I, give me a second, I'm gonna go off camera to grab one. Um, so I've shown these before. They're a little under a square foot. And so, um, and they're larger in one direction than the other, but here they are. You can see these are not normal. When I say foam wedges, these are very tall. I think they're about, um, they're not, I don't think they're a full foot. I think they're like 11 inches. And I think their base is maybe 10 by 10 or something like that. So we're gonna call this, it's, it's actually under a Sabin unit. It's about 0.8 Sabin units. The depth, remember the height of this is really reflective more of the low frequency absorption. The area is gonna be this. So big, big absorber though. And I have enough of these in the room that I was able to do, I had to convert it to meters because I'm using a tool in, on AMROC to do this. And I'll show you some pictures from this AMROC tool. Um, but the AMROC tool, um, are, is known as, so it's amacoustics.com, and this is, AMROC's probably the wrong word. This is, AMROC is the room mode calculator. This is AMREV, the reverberation time calculator. So you go in there and you put in the room. So my room, this office, is 614.68 centimeters, which is really close to 20 feet. 297.18 centimeters wide, which is really close to around nine feet, nine inches and 297.18 height. The height actually was the same as the depth of the room, so also around nine feet, nine inches, which gives it a volume of 54.29 um, cubic meters. I already mentioned the RT60. I'll show you a picture of that. We then added in some absorption. As I mentioned, one of the absorbers that we did was something that looked like this, and I did around 1.75 square meters or so of that in the room. And this tool actually calculated what the assumed, based on the foam wedges absorption coefficient, which I put in, um, and it lets you draw in exactly what it is. So you take the measurement data from the uh, absorber and you just uh, draw it in basically manually into the tool and then that gives you the most accurate way of doing this. 
So I drew that in. Um, and this is, and I will say, this is an absorber that when measured in a lab, measures above one at most frequencies above around 200 hertz or so. And it's because there's no fabric on it. It's very hard to calculate the area because of the surface shape. And so I used the um, measurements that I had to come up with the area. So there's, I think, 10 of these in the room, but the area of this is not the 10 by 10 shape because of the wedge shape. It's actually larger than that. So anyway, back to what we came up with. Once I put in the correct numbers, which was like 1.75 meters square, I get um, a number that it spits out of what it's predicted RT60 would be. And it was amazingly close, especially in the mid range to what the actual measured one was after I added these in. Then I grabbed one of the slat walls that I have, which is just right around a meter um, or so. I think it's slightly more than a meter, square meter of absorber. But the slat wall doesn't have a flat absorption coefficient. It actually absorbs a lot less at high frequencies. So again, I went to the Art Novian website, I pulled the data and I drew it in. You can see I'll have a picture to show you of what that looks like. And I then looked at the drawings it came up with. And basically what it came up with was around, as I mentioned, around 1.2 kilohertz. We're at like around 0.65, 0.66 for an RT60 time. It went to around 0.57 or so when I, here, let me go back to the tool itself. So when I went and added in the absorption, we were at 0.57 um, milliseconds after adding in just the foam wedges and not the panel. And then once I added the panel in, which was just another square meter, you know, I didn't go, remember it was 1.75 square meters. So I, I didn't even double it. It dropped it down to point. Five, four. Um, and when I look at the simulations, it's exactly the reduction I get. It goes from about 0.57 to 0.54 by adding that. And um, so everything lined up really, really well. Now that, that panel was so thin, because I didn't add any extra absorption, so it's just about an inch thick, that the low frequency absorption below 500 hertz is so minimal that it had absolutely no effect in that area. It only affected absorption in the mid-range. It also had no effect in the high frequencies and it's the same issue. This panel reflects so much at higher frequencies and has such a low absorption coefficient that given that I only added one panel, it didn't do anything. So it's very cool. Um, everything lined up basically with prediction. So then the next thing I did, now I didn't go and get, I don't have enough absorption laying around to do this, but I wanted to figure out exactly how much absorption do I need in total to hit the RT60 target of this room. So realistically, what we would wanna do is we would wanna get this right in around, for a room, this is not a very big room. So if we go with the 10 by 20, it's 200 square feet. So 0.25 is actually probably a good RT60 time for the room. So what would I need? Let's see, I put this in before, but I actually was realizing it was a little bit low. So to get it, close to that, I would need roughly 30 meters square of absorption. And that's involving a mix of what we're gonna call full savings, so full absorption units like this, which have a pretty, this because of its depth, this actually absorbs down to like 100 hertz or so, because it's so tall. So these are kind of like almost a perfect saving in a lot of ways. So relying on that, I would need roughly in this room, 15 uh, square meters of these and 15 square meters of the slat panels. And it would give me a relatively flat, I mean, actually just using these would be pretty flat too, but it would give me a relatively flat RT60 time. Um, I don't have enough, I don't have that many square meters of either of those uh, laying around to throw in here to do for the experiment. But the point is I now know how much I need. Now I'm doing everything in metric because that tool is in metric, but you're probably wondering, as I am, um, what would 30 square meters actually be in square feet? So let's put that in here. Um, around 323 square feet. So somewhere, and I will say, sometimes you see a little bit more absorption than you would expect in theory when you start to add in uh, absorbers. So I, I don't always go with exactly the calculated number. I typically go a little short of it because we too tend to get a little bit more than we expect. 
So with that in mind, I'd say 300 square feet of absorption is, is what I probably need um, to get it. And it maybe even can get away with less to hit our target. So let's see, our walls in this room um, are nine feet, five inches, and then 20 feet. So we're at around 180, uh, 180, so two of those walls would be 360, and then we also have 36, Thir um, so 360 plus 36, so almost 400 square feet, 396 square feet total of wall area in the room, not including the ceiling, and we probably want to do about 15% of that, comes in at around 60 square feet, actually we do need to do the, what am I saying, we need to do the wall and ceiling, so the ceiling is also 20 by So one, two, three, four of those. Let's do this correctly. So actually that comes in at around 125 square feet if we use the 15% rule. Um, and as I said, I'm kind of coming up with a calculation a bit higher than that to hit the target RT60. But again, this is a pretty small room um, but it's long, and so maybe that's why we're coming up with needing more. Um, but as I said, we also tend to not need quite as much as we think. So if we use the 15 to 20% rule, we'll probably find that um, we'll, we would have a very good sounding room. We probably would be a little high on the RT60, uh, but it also is really helpful to kind of understand the point. Point being, we can accurately predict how much absorption we need to get a uh, target RT60, but we can also, you got to keep in mind when we're doing that 15% rule, we're not piling all, all up next to each other. We're spreading them out and we get a lot of efficiency advantages by doing that because the absorbers act like a larger absorber than they really are. And it's very rare that we pile all the absorbers together. In fact, you shouldn't be doing that. So the calculation is a, uh, con like a concrete con calculation of exactly what's needed as if you were to pile them all together. Because we're spreading them out and we're getting some efficiency gains from doing that, where the absorption area tends to act as if it's larger than it really is, we can get away with quite a bit less. So if we start to spread these out, you know, this is all one big absorption unit, but like every, when I did the testing, I spread them all out around the room. And uh, I, in fact, we were seeing, I was seeing some of that. So I had to kind of account for the, what we'll call real saving units that I'd added to the room from spreading them out like that. Um, and the same thing would be true if you were treating this room. Even if we did this like a fabric wrapped walls, we wouldn't put behind it 100% absorption. We'd have some panels of, of reflective surfaces, we'd have some absorption, and we'd have some diffusion. And that ultimately would then lead to something where probably about 125 to 150 square feet of absorption would get us really close to our target. As I said, probably a little high, but it actually would sound very good. Um, if you just want to like figure out how much you need to hit the target, no matter what, um, probably, as I said, around, I, I think 275 to 300 would probably get you really close to that. The, the direct calculation is 323 square feet, but as I said, that's just assuming it's all piled in the middle of the floor, which is not what we would actually do in the room, and so we'd, we would end up seeing something a little bit different. So point of all this was did a little experiment, wanted to see how close we got and we got real close. So hopefully you found this interesting and uh, subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos or uh, you know, stay up to date on the videos I do. Thanks.